A new feature in the Xander 360 is the ability to place option spread orders on a single ticket. This means that traders trading option spreads with multiple legs can place the order on a single ticket at a single price. To place an option spread order, the trader simply goes to the standard futures order entry window and toggles from standard to the particular option spread that they're looking to trade, whether it be a horizontal option spread, a call butterfly, a put vertical. We're going to choose call vertical. This is a bull call spread. This is when a trader purchases an option that's relatively close to the money and sells an option with a strike price that is distant to the money. Keep in mind that all spreads when entered in, into the platform must be in the exchange's required format. And you'll see the exchange format down below. In this particular case, again, it's a bull call spread. We're buying a call strike. We're selling a strike that's higher. And the, this is with the same expiration. Also keep in mind that the exchange requires that all spreads are listed with the buy side first and the sell side second. So you'll notice these toggle bu buttons are t grayed out. You will not be able to switch the order of buy and sell. All spreads are quoted in the buyer's perspective. This means if you're selling a vertical spread, you're still going to enter it as a buy, the buy leg first and the sell leg second, and you would simply sell the spread as opposed to buying it. And we'll show you how to do that. You'll notice that even from this screen, we can change the type of option spread we're trading. We could change it to a put vertical, meaning we're buying a put and then selling a second put at a lower strike price at the same expiration. And again, it's always going to be in the buyer's perspective, whether you're selling the spread or buying the spread. The spread is always going to be quoted and displayed at the buyer's perspective. So let's go back to call vertical. To begin entering the legs of the spread, you can do a couple of things. You could either hit this magnifying glass and choose from a, a symbol search. For example, if we were going to trade the E-mini S&P, we might start typing in the symbol. And you'll notice that various strike prices populate. If you've worked with this platform enough, you'll get an idea of how the symbol formatting works, and you'll be able to type it in as easily as that. Of course, if you're new to this platform, it may take a little getting used to, and you could do a search in other ways. If you're not familiar with the symbols or the option symbols, you can go to trading, option chain, new window, and let's assume that you're trying to trade options on the September E-mini S&P. You would type in the symbol for the September E-mini S&P. You can then choose which expiration you want, and you'll notice there are a ridiculous number of expirations available, and that's because the even the S&P has weekly options that expire every Friday, and not only that, but they have options that expire every Monday and every Wednesday. So there are three option expirations every week in the even the S&P. Believe it or not, most of them are liquid. So in this case, Let's say that we want to do a 2750, 2800 bull call spread in the E-mini S&P. We'll be able to find the symbol of the option you're looking for right on the option chain. So you'll notice if I click on the 2750, I've already added this to my quote board, but it'll populate into my order ticket here. And depending on which strike I want to do from there, I can uh, shop around. So let's see what it looks like if we sell the 2800 against the 2750 call. Once populated, you'll be able to see the bid and the ask of each individual option. Now keep in mind, it's not always optimal to place a spread order. Sometimes it makes more sense to leg into a spread, and that means, in this particular case, it would mean buying the 2750 call on a single order ticket and then selling a 2800 call on a single order ticket. And the reason being, it's a lot of work for market makers to constantly be quoting various spreads. As you can imagine, there's thousands of spread possibilities. So market makers tend to offer tighter spreads on the individual options than they do on the spreads. Thus, sometimes you're actually better off legging in as opposed to using option order entry ticket like the one that we're constructing now. With that said, you'll notice the platform actually estimates what the bid and the ask is. Keep in mind, this isn't a real quote. This is not a market maker quote. If you place an order at 2550, 
you're not necessarily guaranteed a fill. It's simply what the system is estimating based on the bid and the ask of the individual options. Now, in a market like the E-mini S&P, it, there's a good chance you'll get filled if you place an order somewhere near the ask if you're buying and somewhere near the bid if you're selling because market makers aren't done. They know where realistically that option spread is trading, and if it's a fair deal, they'll usually take it. Once you have the details of the spread entered, the symbols, you can then toggle the quantity up and down. And notice if I toggle the upper quantity, the lower quantity also toggles. And this is, again, because this spread has to be entered as defined the exchange spread strategy, and that is buying one call and selling one call at a higher strike price of the same expiration. I always recommend using limit orders for options. You should never place a market order for an option, especially a spread. In fact, nine times out of 10, it's gonna get rejected anyway. Most futures and options markets do not accept market orders on options. There's a few that will, but you don't wanna do that given the bid-ask spread up and that sort of thing. Always place a limit order and generally place it between the bid and the ask, depending on how rushed you are to get filled. If you absolutely wanna get filled right away, place the order on the ask, but don't place a market order. If you are entering this order to enter a position, there's a very good chance you're gonna to need to sell the spread to get out. So for example, if you're buying this vertical call spread today and you wanna get out next week or next month, you're gonna to have to sell it at some point down the road. So it's probably a good idea to save a template. And it'll give you a name, you can name it anything you want, but we can save that so that when we come back a month from now or a week from now, whatever it is, and we wanna sell the spread, we can e easily do that. We just toggle, I'll toggle away from it just so you get an idea of how it might work. We go to our template, we choose the call spread that we built in the S&P, and there it is. And again, everything populates correctly, the bid and the ask, the rules. Now, if we're buying the spread, then we place the premium to the buy side, and that's obviously how the spread is quoted anyway. So we'd be buying the 2750 call, and we're selling the 2800 call. If we wanted to place it at a price that has a very good shot at getting filled, we could put it at 25 or 25 quarter, somewhere in that ballpark, and press transmit. Don't press new order. If you press new order, it's gonna clear everything and you'll start over. Choose transmit, and it'll give you the option to confirm whether or not you actually wanna place this trade. It's also gonna give you the cost of the trade. If we're buying this spread, it's going to cost us 25 and a quarter of points or $1,262.50. If I choose submit, it'll submit it to the exchange. I'm going to choose cancel. If we're a premium seller and we want to sell this spread, then we toggle to sell. And you'll notice once we toggle to sell, it does not change anything at the top of the order entry pad. The spread stays the same. It's always in the buyer's perspective. That's the way the exchange wants it. It simplifies things. If you think about it, if you allowed spreads in the seller's perspective, you'd basically have two exchange strategies for the same trade, and that's not necessary. So it's always in the buyer's perspective. If you're selling the spread, you simply sell it. You don't have to flop the legs around. So if we were selling it, we obviously wouldn't want to um, sell it on, on the bid, or we could if we were in a rush to get filled, but I'd probably also place my sell order somewhere around 25. And, we, and again, we're going to hit transmit. In this case, it says the cost of the trade is a credit. So it's not a debit anymore, it's a credit, meaning we're receiving $1,250. We are selling the 2750 call and we're buying the 2800 call. This is the opposite of what the buyer of the spread was doing and we're not paying $12.50, we're collecting $12.50. Something that might save you a little time is you'll notice that the prices, the bid and the ask, estimated bid and the ask of the spread is highlighted. If you click on that, it will populate your limit price to that price. Of course, you can toggle up and down to accommodate. Now, one thing to be aware of, just this ha we happen to be doing a spread on the E-mini S&P. Please note that in the S&P, any premiums over five points can only be traded in quarters, not dimes or nickels. So we can change our price to 25.25 or 25.50, but we can't do anything in between. I mean, we can, but the exchange is just gonna reject it. Obviously, we don't have time to go through each and every different spread available, but I just wanna point out a few just so you have an idea. For example, a call one by two spread. 
this means we're buying one call and we're selling two above. So it's similar to the spread that we just did, only this time instead of selling one option above, we're selling two. So let's go ahead and load a very similar spread. And you'll notice the quantity of the spread is already inputted for us. In this case, because it's a one by two ratio spread, if I increase the top quantity by one, it's gonna double the bottom quantity. And again, you'll be able to see the exchange rules of this particular spread on the right and the estimated bid S spread. Ratio spreads get a little tricky because we're not only involving two legs, but different quantities. So you'll notice that uh, in this particular case, the premium is a negative. So if you're buying the spread, and keep in mind again, when you're talking about a spread in the buyer's perspective, you're always buying the first leg and selling the second leg. So in this case, we'd be buying the 2750 and selling two 2800s. And the person buying this particular trade would receive a credit of 437 and a half. That sounds weird because we're buying the spread. How are we receiving a credit? But again, it's only because we're buying the first leg of the spread. It has nothing to do with the actual cash flow at the end of the trade. And also, and it kind of makes sense because in this case, we're buying one option, we're selling two. So we're collecting more premium for the two options that we're selling than we're paying for the option that we're buying. So it's a net credit. If we're selling the spread, which means we would be selling the first leg of the spread, notice we're selling the 2750 and buying the 2800. This is a debit. We're paying $437 for it. So again, I would just want to point out one more time that the bid ask spread on the spread itself is generally going to be a lot wider than the bid ask spread on each individual option. And again, this is because the individual options are going to be far more liquid and the market makers are going to be far more likely to offer type bid ask spreads on those than they are the package itself. So you want to be mindful of that. If you place a a spread order at a fair price, splitting the bid ask, and you don't get filled in a reasonable time period, you may want to cancel that order and try just legging into the spread. In fact, I want to say more often than not, we generally opt to leg into spreads because I think we can get better fills a lot of times that way. The E-mini S&P is an extremely liquid market. So in this market, it might actually make sense to leg in and out of spreads. If you're trading something that has a lot less liquidity, like cotton or cocoa, coffee, anything like that, spread orders are probably the only way to go. You don't want to get caught getting filled on one leg, waiting to get filled and not filled on the other and have the market move against you. So be mindful, it's not always the best way to do things. Sometimes legging in and legging out is easier. And to be honest, it's probably a little quicker to enter an order, legging in and legging out. So again, this is an awesome tool, the ability to be able to place spreads, but it doesn't necessarily mean it's always the best tool. Once your option spread is placed and you're done with it and you've saved your template or whatever it is you need to do with this, um, to go ahead and begin placing futures orders or to bring things back to normal, click on the drop down and then go back to standard. Once you go back to standard, you'll notice that everything goes back to the typical order entry screen where you can enter futures orders, 